It's Friday, August 19th. From inside the WTOP newsroom, this is the DMV Download, brought to you by the men and women of Steamfitters Local 602. Today, it's no doubt the dog days of summer, or should we say the itchy days, are here. Mosquitoes are enjoying our humid, wetter than normal conditions in the DMV, but the chemicals that are used to kill the bugs that are the bane of our backyards could be doing much more damage than we know. Dr. Lynn Goldman with GW University gives us some perspective about just how bad it is to have your yard sprayed and what alternatives would do the job. You don't actually need to indiscriminately just kill all the bugs in order to control the nuisance of having mosquitoes when there are simpler ways of controlling the mosquitoes. And surely you've heard of artificial intelligence, but did you know you can use it to create one-of-a-kind art? We learn more about a new program that's gaining popularity. Thanks for joining us. I'm Megan Cloherty. Luke is off this week. Spraying for mosquitoes is pretty commonplace around the DMV. You've likely seen it in your neighborhood if you haven't paid for the service before yourself, but the chemicals used by most commercial companies that spray are beginning to worry scientists who say pollinators like bees, butterflies, and even birds are also falling victim to the deadly treatment. Joining me now on Zoom is Dr. Lynn Goldman, Dean of George Washington University's School of Public Health and former assistant administrator at the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Thank you for being here on a Friday. Thank you for having me. Uh, Dr. Goldman, I think we all know, you know, when you call a company to come spray your yard or even your home for bugs, those toxins are not good for you or for the environment as a whole. But tell us what kind of chemicals we're talking about and just how bad are they? Well, they're bad from a couple of different perspectives. One is that all of them have some kind of health or public health side effects, um, some of which we understand very well, some of which we're still learning about. But also, they kill all insects. They don't just target the insects we don't like. They also target the insects that we like, like butterflies and bees, and insects that are very important as sources of food for songbirds and other species. Mm. So while we don't want to go out and get bitten by a mosquito, We also don't want to go out and have the world just be silent around us that there are no birds because we've killed the bugs that the birds eat. Anecdotally, it feels like there are more mosquitoes, but I kind of wonder if people are even using the service now more than maybe they had in past years, the spray service, because we are, you know, we've been at home more. We're spending more time. Maybe you've customized your backyard and you want to be out there and you realize, gosh, I have so many mosquitoes. Is there any indication there's more mosquitoes now just because of the wet weather we've had, you know? Well, there are more mosquitoes over a broad period of time because of the fact that the climate is getting warmer and it happens to be in the D.C. area is an area that has become, if you make, more hospitable for mosquitoes right. because winters are warmer, um, the warmer months go on and on into fall, start early in spring. All of that is very favorable for mosquitoes. And, you know, there's a certain kind of mosquito that loves people. <laughs> It um, lives around homes. It, if you have even tiny amounts of water around your home, such as in flower pots or old tires or any any kind of source of water, small amount, it'll breed in that. Even the and stuff that so drips it, out of your air conditioning. I, I've heard that too, like the little pool outside your air conditioning unit is enough. If you're allowing that water to pool and become a place where the mosquitoes can breed, and then they, they just love that they can... And so I I think the most important thing is to control them at the source to make sure you don't have that kind of water around your home. Mm -hmm. When you're spraying, what happens, and I think a lot of people don't understand this, the the people who come out and spray don't target the spray just on where the mosquitoes are. They spray the entire lawn. They spray around the door frames and windows of your home. They spray around areas where children and toddlers are going to be playing, where your dogs or cats are going to play. And as I said before, they kill all insects. And some of those insects are the insects that, you know, your robins, your Baltimore Orioles, (laughs) your mockingbirds need those insects uh, as a source of food. They're butterflies. We need To see butterflies, that's part of the joy of being outdoors. Fireflies, that's a great part about summer in a place like D.C. And so you don't actually 
need to indiscriminately just kill all the bugs in order to control the nuisance of having mosquitoes when there are simpler ways of controlling the mosquitoes in terms of dealing with their habitat, the pools of water, trying to avoid having places they can breed. The other thing you can do, of course, is apply mosquito pellet. Right, just to yourself as opposed to the grounds around you or your house. And when you do that, you're not killing anything. It's a little bit inconvenient. <laughs> I, you know, I don't like the bother of doing it myself. It's, it's just another thing to remember, spray that on, you know, rub that on before you go out there. But it is an extremely effective way and really more effective than just spraying your own lawn and home. Because as soon as that spraying is over, mosquitoes that are elsewhere in your neighborhood can just fly right over. But don't to your you, lawn and your house anyway. Don't you think, doctor, though, because I know you're a pediatrician as well, people don't want to be spraying the DEET on them and, and the, the bug spray on them. And I know there are natural remedies. Many people don't think they work as well. Perhaps they do. It's a, we'll leave that up to uh, their decision. But, I mean, is it not the best for you to be spraying your chemicals on your kids and if you're pregnant, something like that? I mean, that's kind of a concern as well, is it not? Those chemicals are are okay to use around children and they were okay to use when you're pregnant. Uh, they are not recommended for use in very young children and infants. You don't want to put them on infants because their skin is much more uh, fragile and they can absorb more of it. Hmm. But it's fine to use it um, for your children. And if you're worried about the skin and, and something that I tend to do anyway, you know, if they're wearing shoes and socks, spray it on the shoes and socks, spray it on the shirt collars around the neck. They That's like a to buy idea. Spray yeah. it, the it doesn't have to be all on your skin. It the, the the bugs are repelled wherever you put it. Just don't like it. We should say, too, that some companies who do go out and spray, they use mitigation strategies. Some of them, you know, they don't spray on windy days, for example, or they just offer the res residual barrier strategy where they're just spraying around maybe the perimeter of your property or your house. But it's funny, I looked up about only 10 percent of one company's clientele actually use that option. Most people kind of just want the general douse my yard approach. Um, in your in your view, I mean, how is our area really contributing to this this kind of wipeout of bugs and possibly birds um, more so than other parts of the country, just because of the fact that, you know, we're all centered around a swamp? I, well, I, I wouldn't say we're really centered around a swamp. It feels that way in the middle <laughs> of summer. But I think it is true that any any place where there's excessive use of pesticides, and it's not unique to our area, it's okay. really, it's across a broad swath of the country, we are contributing to the demise, not only of insect species that are beneficial, I mean, after all, we don't have flowers, we don't have fruit without pollinators, and pollinators are bugs, right. <laughs> and we, we need them. And I think we also contributing, though, overall to the exposure level uh, to these chemicals in the population. And we talk about children and worried about children having bug repellent on their skin. I'm far more worried about children crawling around in the grass on the lawn shortly after a sprain and that there's residual pesticide there that they can be picking up or that their puppy is out there doing that. And then they're going to pick up their puppy and cuddle their puppy and pick it up that way. And so I think, I think that it's better to avoid the use of chemicals for controlling these bugs wherever you possibly can. Put up with the annoyance of having the bugs. Use the bug repellent don't spray. And I would certainly say also, if you do spray, don't do it as an automatic thing on contract that just every X weeks, somebody comes out and sprays. That's another thing that I, I think really magnifies the impacts of the spraying and increases the use of chemicals and the damage to the environment. And that is that people get into a contract where even when there aren't any mosquitoes, they think they should have the spraying done to prevent there from being mosquitoes in the future. And that really makes no sense at all. Dr. Lynn Goldman bringing a lot of good information to us today on a, on a summer bug that drives us crazy. But we have to remember, if you're outside, that's their habitat, too. You have to share the, share the space, right, with the bugs and the bees and the birds. Thank you so, so much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. 
And coming up, we learn about a new AI your kids are probably already talking about that creates one-of-a-kind art based on whatever sentence you type in. Backed by the experience of its hardworking members, Steamfitters Local 602 is ready to take on your next commercial heating, cooling, HVAC, or refrigeration project. Steamfitters Local 602 adds value to our community through its partnerships with local contractors and building owners, all while keeping the focus on improving the lives of its members and their families throughout the DMV. For work that's on time and on budget, go to steamfitters-602.org to schedule your next project. That's steamfitters-602.org. Steamfitters Local 602 changing lives. Thanks for listening to the DMV Download. If you like this show, give us five stars and leave us a review on Apple Podcast. We love hearing from you guys and your reviews really do help other listeners find this, our area's only in-depth daily local news podcast. And thank you for making us a part of your day. Okay, so before we go, we are going to tell you about this very cool new AI thing that all the kids are talking about on the TikTok. It's called Dolly, and it is a neural network that creates images from text. And if that sounds confusing, you're in a good camp because I'm, I'm that right there with you. But David Munshank, our engineer extraordinaire, is here to de- describe it for us because you got a special invitation or something. You, you asked to be part of this network. Yeah. So uh, about a month ago, I just randomly submitted um, an invite request for Dolly. Okay. And got access to it. It's it's one of a few different programs that are uh, out there right now that are all trying to accomplish this. Um, one's and, called Crayon. One's called Mid Journey. Okay. But um, basically, what is it? It's basically you write out a sentence. Yeah. So so you give uh, a descriptive sentence as best you can okay. um, of a certain scenario, an object, a style of art, and an artist, and the AI will take that information and grab a whole bunch of different info Mm -hmm. from a giant library of images it has access to Mm -hmm. via the internet right? and tries its best to create something that you're describing through that text. So to give you guys an example, we did, uh, well, David was kind enough. I I sent him some random ideas and then (laughs) you tweaked tweaked them so that we could actually come up with some images. But we said, I'm going to put this on social media so you guys can see, but we said a rural radio station, I believe, in watercolor, and it gave us four options to pick from. And then we actually did the uh, glass enclosed radio station. So uh, yeah, you can see the prompt at the top of the at, at the top of the list there. That one in particular referenced Edward Hopper um, because you can actually tell it uh, a realist painting by Edward Hopper, and it will do its best to look like the artist that you're asking it to look like. This one was a sketch of a Maryland terrapin in front of two computer screens and a microphone. Yeah, this one is maybe my favorite. <laughs> You guys have to see it because it's just pretty cool that you could say, oh, I want this to be, I want this to be like Matisse style, put in a couple phrases and see what it pulls down for you. But, yeah. But you have said that there's a way to sort of write it out so you get the best return. Yeah. So so there's some ways in which that the AI is looking at natural language, like human language. Yeah. Uh, and how it places it together. So as you make things more complicated... In your description, you have to kind of separate out the objects that you want to place into these pictures. So if you say um, a turtle wearing a red hat, a blue sweater, and yellow boots, uh, it's going to try its best to pair that adjective with that noun, so so the descriptor with the object. Yeah. But at a certain point, if you add too many of those, it starts to conflate them. Okay. So it doesn't really know what to do with all of that info. Okay. It has to pare it down. Well, but okay, this is kind of maybe an obvious question, but how would you use this? Like, why? what is the point of this? I guess for right now, it's for research. Um, it's just trying to, the purpose that's listed from Dolly itself, uh, from OpenAI that develops Dolly, yeah. is that they're just mostly trying to design um, a system that you tell it what to do and it learns how to do it. It's, it's mostly an experiment. Um, and right now it's limited to non-commercial use, Uh, Just kind of playing around with it. Yeah. So I paid $15 and got 100 images, which I'm very happy for because I can just send them to random coworkers. I had another (laughs) person on the tech team. I sent him a picture of uh, a panda sitting at a table. Pandas are his favorite animal. Yeah. uh, Surrounded by snacks. And I I said like Doritos and Mountain Dew, you know, like typical stereotypical. uh, Engineer food. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And this is Kate Ryan's cat, who I, I typed in, what did we say? An impressionist oil painting by Monet of a tabby cat 
with a white face, green eyes, knitting a pale blue sock. Yes. And that is what we got. We yeah. Got, <laughs> you guys have to check this out on social media. I'll put a p- couple pictures up. David Munchank, thanks for sharing of course. this dolly thing that apparently you're going to start seeing in a lot of places, I think. I think so, too. I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of implications to it as well. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to the way that they're using this AI and the way that this AI is going to interact with other types of art in the future. Computers are getting smarter. They are. <laughs> Thank Anytime you. you want to ask me about nerdy stuff, let me know. <laughs> I'll take you up on that. And that'll do it for us today on the DMV Download. We are sponsored by Steamfitters Local 602. Our managing editor is Craig Schwab, and our music is by Real World. Leave us a review and rate our show if you get the chance. And follow us on the dmvdownload.com to become a VIP listener. The DMV Download is a product of WTOP News. Listen on 103.5 FM in the D.C. area, 107.7 FM in Virginia, 103.9 FM in Frederick, online at wtop.com and on the WTOP News app. Have a good weekend.